Last time on Dragon Ball Z. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to remake Lion King in this fashion, with Christopher Walken as Scar, Andy Serkis as Mufasa, where Nala Usup Simba as the main protagonist of the film. I'm not giving these my support. So if you ask me my opinion on Beauty and the Beast or the Winnie the Pooh movie, I won't have an answer for you. I TOLD YOU ALL THIS WAS GOING TO HAPPEN! Anywho, I brought up that old video not just to tell you that I SAW THAT ONE COMING, PEOPLE! But to reaffirm my stance and explain why I'm looking at this movie after I previously said I wouldn't. I was prepared to ignore this film as well until I started to see the trailers and saw how this was shaping up, and I realized that this film doesn't really qualify for my personal boycott. Now, my main problem with the majority of these live-action Disney films is that they are pointless with their rehashing of the originals. Why should I go out to see a worse updated version of a film that doesn't need the touch-up? What is going to be the point of making the same movie again if it's basically going to be a line-by-line -line retelling? Why bother? Christopher Robin, however, is free of this criticism by doing something completely unheard of in this day and age. Telling its own original story. <gasps> oh, the humanity! Yeah, this movie is something completely new, which is what I want, honestly. If you have to dust off these old properties, then make a new story with them. And on top of that, in the case of this film, a story that's never been done before with these characters. I just need to specify this now, that I was a bit hasty writing this film off before seeing what it was about. Little fact about myself, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh was the first movie I ever saw. So, as you can imagine, I have a bit of a bias. I really want to be critical with these films, but it's so hard! Poor Pooh Bear didn't mean any harm, he just wanted an extra smack roll of honey. The quickest way I can recommend this movie to you is by comparing it to another with a similar premise. Remember the movie Hook starring Robin Williams? Well, this is basically Hook, but instead of following up on the Peter Pan stories, it's a follow-up to the Winnie the Pooh stories. With that in mind, the film follows many of the same drum beats as Hook. We follow a grown-up Christopher Robin who now has a family of his own, but is so preoccupied with his job that he finds his family drift further and further away. It's only when Pooh and the gang from the Hundred Acre Woods happen to re-enter the picture that Christopher rediscovers the joys of living life again. Going into the movie, I wasn't all too familiar with its director, Mark Forster, or the bulk of his filmography for that matter. The only piece of his I've seen beforehand was the Kite Runner adaptation from 2007, which I remember liking well enough, but that was years ago, so his name held little weight to me. One of the main charms of the film, right off the bat, is seeing the rest of the cast reprise their iconic roles in a live-action setting. There are few things in this world as wonderfully wholesome as Jim Cummings' Pooh and Tigger performance. The rest of the voice cast is on point as well. Piglet, however, was the odd one out. Nick Muhammad's voice took a bit to adjust to. I can't help but look at Piglet and expect the voice I'm used to to come out, but I adjusted quickly. The designs of the Hundred Acre Woods crew was a bit jarring at first glance, but they do grow on you. Seeing all the detail put into the models, both physical and digital, was a true treat for me. The two oddballs that made me scratch my head were Owl and Rabbit, weirdly enough. The rest of the characters are well-worn stuffed animals. Meanwhile, Owl and Rabbit are portrayed as real animals, and for the life of me, I can't understand why. I can kind of get the idea behind Owl being a real owl, as I can imagine a plush not being able to believably fly around, but I see no reason for this to be the case for Rabbit. 
Yes, they aren't in the film for long, but Kanga and Rue are in the film for about as long, and they are stuffed animals as well, so... Am I missing something here? I also have no idea how the film handles the Pooh characters, and by that I mean, how is this movie interpreting these guys? Maybe it was just me, but I always thought the implication from the previous films was that Pooh, Tigger, Piglet, and the rest were all imaginary friends for Christopher Robin. Maybe there was a forest that he played in, or maybe it was his childhood room. Either way, my assumption was that they weren't really there. This movie not only shows the Hundred Acre Woods as a real place, and we see Pooh and company interacting with their surroundings, but fully capable of speaking to others besides Christopher. I'd be fine with this interpretation, but the movie tries to have its honeypot in it too, by also having them in the Hundred Acre Woods change and disappear based on Christopher's state of mind somewhere in the middle of the film. And yes, this is a really cool idea on paper, but it doesn't really work when you've established them as sentient beings that can exist with or without Christopher. So are you trying to tell me that they do exist and don't at the same time? What kind of Zen Riddle rubbish is this? Regarding the human cast, I was really nervous about Ian McGregor as the grown-up Christopher Robin. Not because I thought he was going to suck or anything, but because the only other films I knew him from were the Star Wars prequels. Granted, he was my favorite actor from those films, but I was dearly afraid that I wasn't going to be able to see anything beyond Obi-Wan playing with his stuffed teddy bear. Granted, that's a wonderful mental image, but that's beside the point. But I'll say it up front, this is probably my favorite performance of his. Like Pooh in the gang's appearance, he sells the portrayal of a well-worn Christopher who is weighed down by all of his responsibilities. There is this sort of warm nature to his performance that makes it nigh impossible to hate him. The rest of the human cast is... serviceable. Besides McGregor, there really were no standout performances, but just as well, there really were no standout awful showing, so it gets a check in my book. Same with the music, actually. It really doesn't stand out all too much, but it gets the job done. Plus, those moments where you hear a jingle from the old movies really makes my heart melt into a puddle of feels. No, seriously, it makes my heart melt. Someone help me! Help! I can't stop! I went into this movie expecting it to end on a somber, if not depressing note given the inherent theme of growing up. But to my surprise, it actually ends on a pretty sweet note, which I feel perfectly sums up my feelings towards the film. Christopher Robin, at the end of the day, is a pretty nice feel-good piece for anyone who grew up with these characters. Is it messy? Yeah. But it exists as a comfortable feel-good experience for anyone who did grow up with Winnie the Pooh. And if you did, I firmly believe you'll get the most out of the experience. It's a hard sell to recommend to those who don't care about these characters, however. For those people, I think you'll get more mileage out of the aforementioned hook. As for me personally, I see myself watching this again in the future as a nice piece of comfort food for my nostalgia.